If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, September 30th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finis Monitor, we will talk to Lars Jorgensen. He's now in the throes of his first season as head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats swim teams, and he's just started the season with a dual meet against Georgia. Lars is back in Lexington, Kentucky now, and that's where he joins us via Skype. Coach Lars, good to see you. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me on this morning. Good to have you. So uh, how does it feel to uh, officially be the head coach at Kentucky? Oh, it's great. It's a wonderful opportunity here. Uh, University of Kentucky is a great place. Lexington is a great city. So I'm really excited about trying to move the program forward. And you, this is your second season, actually, at Kentucky. You were brought on the season before to kind of get acclimated to the team before longtime coach Gary Connolly moved on. What was it like to be there during that transition period? You know, I thought it was excellent, really. Got to, get to know a lot of the athletes, um, and I think that transition for one year really helped and, you know, is paying dividends right now instead of just starting over. Um, so I think we started really beginning the process of transitioning a little bit last year. Um, and then the spring and the summer, we're, we're, we're fully kind of transitioned. So, you know, it's still a work in progress. We've got a long way to go. But, um, you know, I think uh, being here for a year, working under Gary, um, gave me some insights um, to our athletes here, but also the university. Every university is, you know, run differently, different systems. And so um, everything's not totally brand new, but, you know, um, every year is different, you know, even if you've been coaching somewhere for 10 years, it's the, the you know, new freshman that changes every year, the team chemistry is different, so, but um, everyone's really excited, um, we've got a great group of kids right now, great leadership, um, so we're pretty excited about the direction that we're going. And you guys hit the ground running, so to speak, your first dual meet probably couldn't get any tougher against the University of Georgia. Um, first of all, I, I just want to kind of get your thoughts on, on the format of the meet. It was kind of like a double distance. They were swimming 150s and 300s of the strokes and a 2,000 free and a 300 free. What did, what did you guys think of that? Well, that's something that uh, Jack Bowley and I discussed. We, it was such early part of the season that we wanted to kind of do something a little bit different. Um, and we're both in a kind of like hard training mode right now, so we thought it would be you know, beneficial come February to, to race some different things. And, you know, we race often in college and it's always, you know, hundreds and two hundreds, generally the same format to do something different was fun. And uh, I think the kids really enjoyed it. I think the kids from Georgia did as well. And again, it was just a really, really good training opportunity. Um, you know, they got a great team. So, uh, you know, I thought we were competitive in some races, but um, you know, their national champions is really a, a, a tough way to begin in, in terms of winning and losing. But you know, I think it was a great experience. Um, we, had, we had an outstanding trip. And I, th I think it was a lot of fun, really. It was different. Um, the last relay, which I thought was pretty fun, they did a, a six by 50. So each athlete had to go twice. And you know, it was kind of funny seeing, you know, the second 50, how close it was to the first 50. And, um, and some people were, were remarkably good on their second 50. So it, it was fun. It was, you know. Uh, like I said, we're in the midst of some pretty hard training. Um, we're just gearing up for February, March, but it was a great way to start off the season. Yeah, I'm sure those guys were probably maybe thought it was going to be fun to have to swim a 50 twice on a relay. But those guys that had to do a 2000 free, obviously, that's longer than anything you have to do in a race. Obviously, that gets you probably mentally ready to, to do something like the 1650. And like you said, it's different than doing the normal dual meet thousand. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think the probably the hardest thing the um, it seemed like the kids were dealing was was uh, that 300 butterfly. Oh yeah, um, we had a lot of interpretation about that. But you know the the, the 2,000 kids, I, I think probably the same thing on Georgia. You know they they've done that before in practice. Um, it's only 350 yards more than a 1650 really, so it's not that much further. Um, but you know when you most of the time in dual meets you do a thousand, so it's going to feel a lot shorter and a lot quicker. 
Um, but the 300 fly was a little bit challenging, at least mentally. Um, some of the kids, you know, struggle with the 200 fly, and then they're going, gosh, i got to do a 300 butterfly. But I think for the most part, like I said, they handled it well. Um, you know, like I said, Georgia's a great program, um, you know, and they, you know, won all the races. But, you know, we were competitive for some seconds and thirds, and we had some really good swims for us, um, you know, in September. Now, a month from now, we're not going to be pleased with that. But, you know, for where we are right now, um, you know, I thought the kids really kind of stepped up and raced hard. And, you know, that's all we're looking for right now is some progress, um, you know, with effort and enthusiasm, um, you know, those type of things. We didn't go into the meet expecting that we're going to beat Georgia. We wanted to go in expecting to compete hard, um, you know, and those type of things. And I think we did that. Well, Kentucky's had some some pretty good uh, performances over the years, especially at the NCAAs. Just recently, someone like Tyler Reed um, doing well in, in the freestyle events and the sprint relays always doing well at the men's meet. What? How how long do you think it will take, or is that is this going to be the season where Kentucky's going to be someone a, a team that everybody's going to have to take notice of? Well, we want to make some. Um, in- uh, has some impact this year, but I don't think we're going to be nearly as good, you know, this year as we will, you know, hopefully three or four years from now. I think it is a process, um, and you know, if it takes a lot of a lot of years to really kind of build the type of program we have. We have, like I said, we have a lot of great things about UK, the you know, great campus and the community and the sport with our athletic director. Um, so you know, I think a lot of things that um, are going to be interesting to recruits and to help build our program. But you know, it can be a situation where you know, like right now, we're you know ninth in the conference and we could be top twenty at the NC two A championship. So um, I think Kentucky's had Tyler Reed and had some other good swimmers in the past. Um, but our challenge is now to you know try to get a whole team and consistently competing at the national level. So I think that's what our challenge is and. I think that's going to take a while. So, you know, we need to have like, you know, six or eight Tyler Reeds, and then I think we're going to be really good. Right. Right. Well, you're on the recruiting trail right now, I'm sure, and you're talking to a lot of freshmen about, you know, what you want to do with them in the next four years. What is kind of like the five-year plan for Kentucky? Well, we just want to see progression. You know, um, it, again, it's a process. We're not, you know, saying that, you know, we're going to win SECs in five years from now. I think, you know, winning the SEC is, you know, perhaps as difficult as winning the national championship. So um, we want to compete at the national level. And again, consistency. I think the hallmark of any program um, is consistency year in, year out. You know, if it's Kentucky basketball, um, you know, Georgia swimming, it's year in, year out. Out. So um, that's the hallmark of being a champion, I think, is consistency. And so that's what we're trying to work at is, you know, improving every single year and, you know, not just be good one year and then kind of fall off the map for a couple of years. We want to consistently have a competitive program. When you were a swimmer, you were a star distance swimmer. You made the Olympics in the 1500. Uh, what, as a coach, what is it like to uh, coach sprinters? Do you find it easy to coach sprinters, or do you, you know, feel more comfortable with the distance group? No, it's always fun sometimes to coach something that um, you know you necessarily weren't great as an athlete. Um, so, you know, I, I find it actually really challenging. Um, I, I, I enjoy coaching various things. Um, you know, I think being a distance athlete, do, doing you know Hawaii Ironman, I, I have an appreciation. Uh, of what it takes to be really good um, in, in distance. But um, our goal as a program is to have a well-balanced team throughout, you know, including diving. We have a great diving program right now and a great diving coach. So we want to be good, you know, sprint to middle the distance and across the board and, you know, have comprehensive excellence throughout our program. Well, look at somebody like Rick DeMond, who was a star distance swimmer in his day, and he's now coaching some yeah. of the best sprinters in history. So it's not right. its not out of the question for a great distance swimmer to be a good sprint coach. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of times you have to think a lot because, you know, you, you weren't particularly good at it, you know. And, and so um, sometimes, like, you know, like my natural talent was to work hard, and I had a pretty good aerobic engine. But, you know, the technical things are things as a coach that I really try to stress. And in part because I probably wasn't as good as an athlete at those things. And so um, you learn to think and communicate. And, uh, again, it doesn't really matter for us um, what you swim. We want everyone to get better. And, you know, again, across the program, men and women, 
um, you know, in all the events uh, to be competitive. Well, uh, speaking of uh, swimming at the Olympics, your big brother Dan was also an Olympian. How's he doing these days? He's he's doing very well. He, he um, um, is kind of in the swim business. He um, works for S and R Smith, a uh, pool company, designs, and he's doing a great job. So he's he's, he's got his foot a little bit in the swimming, um, but uh, he still follows it a little bit. He went to NC two A's last year. Um, he just as a fan, so um, he was a heck of a swimmer and. You know, my dad was my coach, so, you know, we've been doing this really our whole life, and we're a swimming family, and so, um, you know, he, my brother stays in touch with it, but uh, not day in and day out, kind of like I do, you know? Yeah, it's probably, it's probably best. I was, I was hoping maybe he was, gonna, he was kind of interested in doing college coaching, and maybe we could have the Jorgensen brothers be rivals in the, in the pool at one point. Yes, yes. Well, so, it's not uh, out of the realm of possibility. Maybe one day you'll convince him. Well, uh, Lars, before we go, we want to submit you to the final five. These are five questions that we ask all of our guests to uh, kind of get to know them a little bit better, get to um, understand your personality a little bit, a little bit more. So here's, here we go with the first question. If you could change the order of the strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Um, I would make it a free-for-all. You could choose what you want and just have to do all four strokes. And I think that'd be kind of fun. You know, so you, uh, on a 400 IM, you have to go 100 of each stroke, but you can go in any order you want. So, at, um, you know, having somebody in the lead and they got breast stroke in the last 100 and watching a freestyle try to run them down would be kind of fun. That would be fun. Maybe a little bit of a nightmare for the stroke judges, but still be fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you could try a career other than your own, which would it be? I would love to work at ESPN. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> and what's a career you think you would not want to try? Being a doctor. Being a doctor, yeah. I can probably understand that. If you could change or add one of the rules in the swimming rule book, what would it be? Non-continuous backstroke turn. Mm, okay. That's, I mean, it, it's, I don't know why that's a rule. I mean, I think you, the reason you have rules is because you know, take advantages away. I think it's a disadvantage to kind of glide in the wall, you know? So, um, you know, you're going to get penalized for having a bad turn if you're gliding the wall, then, you know, I don't know why you need to be DQ'd on top of it. Okay. And last question, where's your favorite place to go for vacation? Um, I enjoy the mountains, probably. Colorado. I thought you were going to say growing up being a Southern California boy, you'd love the beach. Yeah, I do like it, but um, if I had to pick anywhere, I'd go skiing. But the, the problem is in, in coaching is always right during the, the ski season. So, you know, it's really hard to go away. But some of my fondest memories actually in California would be swimming all week outside, you know, um, and then on the weekends going up to like Mammoth or, uh, you know, mountains up there. So um, I really kind of enjoy skiing, the outdoor lifestyle I really enjoy. So. Um, but yeah, being in the beach would be great, but I'd probably prefer to be up in the mountains, um, you know, skiing or something like that. Sounds good. Uh, any place probably just to, a coach for a coach to be able to go on vacation anywhere would be great. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> All right, Lars, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, wish you the best of luck with the start of this season and, uh, we will see you throughout the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. That was Lars Jorgensen joining us for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show, and that's going to do it for the show. Keep up on the college news. Keep up on the best college news by going to our college channel at SwimmingWorld.com. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.